Hello and welcome to graphing nonlinear functions in my math lab. Let's look at this first question. f of x equals the quantity x minus 2 squared minus 1. It's a parabola. So let's enlarge our graph, choose whether we're doing a vertical or horizontal parabola, and begin by plotting the vertex of our parabola. We then plot one other point and because the parabola is symmetric, my math lab will finish our graph. Click Save and check your answer. Here we have x squared equals 2y. Again, a parabola. Begin by plotting the vertex, and then plotting one other point. Let's assume we choose x equals 2. 2 squared is 4, half of that is 2. So we have the point 2, 2. Save, and check your work. This next function is a polynomial function. Before you graph it, you will respond to questions regarding the graphs and behavior, and intercepts. You will then use these to create your graph. For a polynomial graph, you will click the four-point cubic tool. Begin by plotting the leftmost intercept, negative 1. Then plot your y-intercept, positive 1 x equals 1, x equals 4. Oops, if you made a mistake, click clear, remove the objects, and start again. Negative 1, 4, 1, x equals 4. Your next graph is an exponential function. When you click on this, you will notice you now have the exponential tool. Choose the tool and begin by plotting the y-intercept. When x is 0, y is 1. You will automatically be given an exponential graph, and you will need to use the options to shrink or stretch the graph to match this particular function. f of x equals 3 to the x power. Remember before we click to check our work that we also need to show 3 to the negative x. So again, choose your exponential icon, plot that, now reflect that graph over the y-axis, and again, shrink or stretch your graph as necessary. then check your work. You may need to go back and again check your vertical stretching or shrinking or horizontal stretching or shrinking or shifts or reflections to make sure that the values match your functions. Let's look at another example. Graphing a logarithmic function. We'll begin here by graphing y equals log base 5 of x. Choose a logarithm tool.
and plot a point. When x is 0, excuse me, when y is 0, x is 1. This time, our default graph is exactly what we're looking for, since another point would occur at 5, 1 for our function. Again, we can vertically stretch or shrink or horizontally stretch or shrink or flip over the axis each of these graphs. The other part of this question asks us to do log base 5 of x plus 7. Think about what that means in terms of your graph. Think about what that means in terms of your graph. If, for example, y was 0, then x would be negative 6. Notice, however, if we try to graph that, we're just going to be prompted to return to our regular graph that we've already completed and use the shrinking, stretching, or reflection tool. This is our base, 5, and then we can choose to shift or stretch our graph. Notice to begin plotting g of x, we need to use a horizontal shift of negative 7. We then need to take a look at if we need to complete any vertical stretching or shrinking. Once we are satisfied that the graph is correct, then we can click Save and check our answers. If we find that it's not correct, we can return to our graph and again, use the tools to work on stretching or shrinking. The question may ask you to complete, for example, the amplitude or phase shifts and then click to graph. Notice when we graph a trigonometric function, we are given tools such as the sine tool or the cosine tool. Since we are asked to graph y equals 7 sine x, notice we are first given a sine graph. We then need to modify the amplitude accordingly and then if the graph involved a phase shift or any other transformations apply those then click Save and check your work. On our last question we're looking at a cosine graph. Choose the cosine tool. And click to plot. The period of the graph is still 2 pi. The vertical shift is, however, 1. When you're finished, click Save and check your work.